Thank you. Thank you, Arnie, and thank you for inviting me to be part of this plenary. Well, I'm concerned um, with search and rescue basically from the bottom up. And what seems to be largely missing from any of the conversations is really an in-depth look at the role that local communities willingly and unwillingly should, can, and will play in an emergency situation. The recent Arctic agreements on search and rescue, emergency preparedness and response, as well as the new Arctic Coast Guard Forum, all go a long way in creating a regional approach to deal with many types of emergencies, including the fact that many of those would very likely be transborder in nature. Up to this point, however, the agreements have primarily focused on the eight Arctic states from the perspective of the nation state and how national governments can cooperate with one another. However, I argue that the Arctic Coast Guard Forum is actually an opportune space to discuss what is actually happening on the ground and for thinking critically about how to better bridge the local level to regional and state level cooperation. And to really start thinking about search and rescue really from as a pan-Arctic system of governance. The Arctic Coast Guard Forum could take the time to document instances where things have gone wrong, such as the case of the Deepwater Horizon spill, when it took the US Coast Guard and BP two days after the spill began to begin recruiting local fishermen to help. We can also learn from the September 2010 incident when the MV Clipper Adventure ran aground and passengers ended up coming up on shore in Kuglatuk, which is an Inuit hamlet on the Northwest Passage, and the local challenges that that instance created. The Arctic Coast Guard Forum could also take stock of what practices are in place and the gaps that remain, as we've been discussing a little bit already. For instance, Iceland has a countrywide volunteer ISAR program, which is entirely funded by the sale of New Year's Eve fireworks. Another arrangement is NOFO in Norway. And through NOFO, Inai has created a collaboration with the local fishers for search and rescue up in Hammerfest. And the thinking behind NOFO actually reaches back to the citizens' advisory councils um, in Alaska. And more recently, Alaska has created an Arctic Waterways Safety Commission in 2014. And ultimately, the reality is, is that what mu much of what happens in an emergency and during a search and rescue mission takes place on the ground with the help of local communities and in those communities themselves. In many cases, those e communities are extremely small, some with only a few hundred inhabitants. And in all cases, they want to have a capacity to lend a hand. An adequate response to a major search and rescue mission will have to be coordinated, will have to have a coordinated plan in place, in collaboration with Coast Guards and local responders, which build off of instances such as those I've mentioned here. And this will, of course, ultimately require, as, as already been mentioned, um, much greater um, investment, um, much greater resources and investment in local community capacity and infrastructure, anywhere from boats and telecommunications to even ports. And one can question whether or not, then, relying on New Year's Eve fireworks sales to fund um, Iceland's ISAR um, program is a sustainable solution. And of equal importance um, is the issue of what role insurance providers um, should play and can play. What would result if a ship flagged in another country has an emergency which results in passengers utilizing all of a local community's provisions, sometimes which are only flown in once or twice a year? Who is responsible and who oversees that responsibility? At the same time, I would argue that consultation, which is often um, discussed and when it comes in terms to indigenous communities, is really insufficient. It's not the same as formal collaboration with local first responders. And so the real challenge for the Arctic Coast Guard Forum will, will be to really not only acknowledge, but also address and even incorporate local and other forms of hybrid governance into its own policy making. For instance, could NOFU serve as a trans-border model between Canada and Greenland, or US and Canada? Could there be a NOFO for the Arctic shipping industry? As the Deepwater Horizon incident demonstrated, search and rescue cannot always be top down. In some instances, it needs to be bottom up. And the most efficient system will be one where both are working together to be ready to address an emergency at all levels. Thank you.